status in Iraq and particularly how it's brought back two old enemies That's together. That's right. It's on the front page of The Independent from the Great Satan to the Great Rapprochement. Now, what is this about? Well, according to a lot of papers like The Independent, the collapse of Iraq has prompted a kind of reconciliation between Iran and the Western powers that used to vilify, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, basically the independent wonders could shared interests over uh, Iraq and 35 years of hostility. Well, it's a very surprising turn of events that's getting a lot of attention. I pulled out a cartoon from The Guardian as well, where you can see Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and the U.S. Secretary of State there, uh, John Kerry, kind of half-heartedly shaking <laughs> hands. Uh, and they're meeting each other. They say, are you the Aaron boy, a boy of Satan? And, oh, you're the fountain of world terror, I presume. So interesting meeting going on there. But well, as I said, a lot of papers are focused on this. Uh, in Slate, the columnist of Fred Kaplan, he argues in favor of this surprising uh, rapprochement. He says, sometimes we must form alliances with unpleasant nations to prevent something worse. Although he does point out in a lot of ways, it's a question of choosing the less worst option. We have to decide which prospect we dislike less, uh, an Islamist state in Iraq or a strengthened expansionary Iran. And uh, a lot of papers are focusing on the uh, fact that uh, Iran has already jumped into action in Iraq. That's right. An article in the Daily Beast says that while uh, President Obama is weighing his options whether or not to re-enter the Iraq war, Iran, uh, well, is looking to step into the void and is er offering Iraq everything it needs to fight ISIS. So what is everything it needs. Well, according to the Daily Beast, it, it talked to uh, senior Iraqi officials and U.S. officials, and they say that Iran is already offering Prime Minister uh, al-Maliki its army, its spies, and highly trained uh, irregular units from its revolutionary uh, guard. And this collaboration is also very surprising, because remember that Iran and Iraq uh, waged a very long war in the 1980s. And so this article actually quotes Iraqi officials. They say, we face an existential threat. Uh, we can't coexist with ISIS. So unfortunately, when people are desperate, they take desperate measures. OK, let's move on to some news uh, that you've picked out from Tunisia. That's right. Le Monde uh, focuses on what's happening to young people who participated in the Arab Spring. And according to uh, Le Monde, Tunisia's justice system is taking it out on them. There are over 130 trials involving dozens of young people who participated in the Arab Spring. So this was three and a half years ago, bear in mind. Now, uh, the photo you can see here is a young ma man named Safwan Bouaziz. Uh, he's 30, year old, 30 years old, uh, but back in December uh, tw uh, 2010, at the age of 27, he launched a rallying cry that became really huge in Tunisia. He was the first one, according to this article, to say, the people want the government to step down. And this became a very a trend mm -hmm. throughout Tunisia. But yesterday, he appeared before a court in Sidi Bouzid, so where the revolution started. And to quote some of these other uh, people who participated in the Arab Spring, before the revolution, I thought I'd never been to jail since I've been six times. Basically, these young people thought things would change after the revolution, but according to this article, it hasn't. OK, and we'll stay with the Le Monde for uh, another story about some other people who've perhaps been a little overlooked in the news agenda, um, the plight of a certain group of women in Albania. Yes, this is a very interesting article in Le Monde. Uh, they're known as Bernezas. They're sworn virgins, and basically they're women who have chosen to take the vow of chastity to wear men's clothes and to live as men in order to escape the patriarchal domination in northern Albania especially. Very interesting uh, report in Le Monde. A lot of these women are old because uh, they say that thanks to uh, modern times, young women don't face this domination. But while we're staying on the topic of women, there's a very interesting article in the New York Times today. It's about a study that was carried out in the U.S. about judges. And uh, you can see the result of the study. Uh, judges with daughters are more likely to vote in favor of women's rights than ones with only sons. This is known as the daughter effect, and uh, a lot of researchers have found this effect in other areas like Congress and even the way people vote in the UK. Very interesting indeed. Thanks very much, Florence Filmino there with a look through the international papers. We have got plenty more news coming up for you in just a couple of minutes after our short break in our special focus report at quarter to 10 Paris time. The military junta in charge of Thailand is aiming to boost national happiness. Find out what that means and how they're hoping to achieve it.